Hello, and welcome to the most hotly anticipated episode of the Shadow of Hakuho yet. Today is the day it happens. Kisuno Sato becomes a Yokozuna. Well, he, he was one, but early. Stop throw! Hello, welcome back to the Doyo here on Mr. JWag's channel. Today is a very exciting episode. We are jumping back into the shadow of Hakuho, the alternate timeline where Hakuho does not exist. And today, Kisuno Sato becomes a Yokozuna. Like early, like he became one, but like it would have happened so much earlier. Now, for those of you who may be a bit newer to sumo, you may only know Kisuno Sato as, oh, wasn't he that Yokozuna who had to retire recently? Not for bar-related reasons. Kisuno Sato was our most recent Yokozuna, who unfortunately had to retire after only 12 Basho at the tournament because of injury. But there is so much more to his story than that. So now we have a Dohyo deep dive into Kisuno Sato. Cuando Kisuno Sato vino a la ciudad, nos salvó con su consistencia y su conferencia. Kisuno Sato, Kisuno Sato, Kisuno Sato. Kisuno started professional sumo at age 15 in the year 2002. So he's what you call a sumo lifer. You're going to see some parallels between Kisuno Sato and another uh, great sumo lifer who also was Ozeki for a very long time, Kayo. So yeah, at 15 he started sumo. At age 18 he made the Makauchi division. And before his 20th birthday he made Komasubi in the year 2006. A year I know we all remember because we all fell in love with a certain songstress named Hannah Montana. You see, she had the best of both worlds. He was a Sanyaku regular by 2008, and by 2012 was an Ozeki. Now, he stayed at Ozeki for 31 consecutive Basho, during which time he racked up 11 Jun Yusho without ever winning a tournament. In fact, that was what he was most known for before he became a Yokozuna. And the other thing he was famous for was the fact that he never, ever went Kyujo. He lasted 15 consecutive years in professional sumo without missing a match, until... Uh... It was his first tournament at Yokozuna, and he ended up getting injured in a match with Harum of Fuji and was never quite the same afterwards, only completing one other basho in his, the rest of his career. But yes, of course, Kisuno Sato did end up winning two consecutive tournaments. He became a Yokozuna, unfortunately had to retire because of the pectoral injury. But he was the first Japanese Yokozuna since Takano Hana retired. And that was in 2003. So yeah, it feels like Kisuno Sato has been around sumo forever, and then you realize, oh, he's, he's 34, and he, he's, he's an Oyakata now, uh, Araiso Oyakata. And he's actually Takayasu, uh, one of his Oyakata now, so he gets to wrestle with Takayasu every day. So who wouldn't love to do that in retirement? And Kisuno Sato is also keeping up the tradition of just looking fly AF in a suit after he gets his hair cut. Look at this man! Snack! Okay, I mean, meal! All right, now that we've dug into the past of Kisuno Sato, it's time to dive into a different alternate universe, the Shadow of Hakuho. For those of you who are new to the channel, The Shadow of Hakuho starts on episode 7, so bam, there's going to be a link up there. But basically, it is an alternate timeline where Hakuho does not exist, so I take all the Yusho that he won, and I give them to I, who I believe was the deserving Rikishi for that tournament. Here we go. Yusho number 25. May 2013, Hakuho wins with a 15-0 Zensho Yusho. Jun Yusho, second place, goes to Ozeki Kisuno Sato. Next, two wins down at 11-4 are Yokozuna Haramafuji, Ozeki Kotoshogiku, Megashira 1, Miyogiryu, and Megashira 11, Gagamaru. I give this one to Kisuno Sato in a lock. 
Always nice to start out with a lock. Nice, simple, clean. This one was a pretty easy one to go through, actually. We had Hako Ho getting his intro Yusho, but then underneath that, we had one wrestler who had above 11 wins, and it was Kisano Sato with a 13 and 2. Now, this lock is even more of a lock than a usual lock, making it like a double lock because of the way Kisa Nosato got his 13 and 2. Kisa Nosato started the tournament with 13 consecutive wins before finally losing in the last two days to Hakuho and Kota Shogiku. Kisa Nosato started 13 and 0 and every single other person who finished 11 and 4 beneath him ended up having three losses by the end of day 13. So, Kisa Nosato would have had this one wrapped up before he had any losses in the tank. Now, the interesting thing about this Basho is that depending on what you thought of my last episode, Go 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 Edo, he had a definite maybe there in Yusho number 24 that could have gone to Kisa no Sato. So if he had won that one and won this one, we'd be looking at a Yokozuna Kisa no Sato. But I don't think he would have earned two in a row quite yet. For that, we're going to need Yusho number 26! July 2013. Hakuho wins with a 13 and 2 record. Next down is Ozeki Kisuno Sato and Megashira 12 Kaisei with 11 and 4. Below that at 10 and 5, Yokozuna Harumafuji, Ozeki Kakuryu, and Megashira 2 Tochiyoza. Behind that at 9 and 6 come 9 different wrestlers including Ozeki Kotoshogiku, Ozeki Kotooshu, and Megashira 1 Takeyasu. I give this one to Kisuno Sato in a strong case. Now, I love Kaisei, the giant Brazilian, but I could not give his schedule much weight because he did not face any Sanyaku. So even though he is tying uh, Kisno Sato there for the Jun Yusho, I, I, I can't really consider him a contender. But if you take Kaisa out, there are essentially four people who are uh, the contenders for this. Kisno Sato, who has the one win advantage, then Harumafuji, Kakuryu, and Tochi Ozan. Now, sometimes I will take that extra win against Hakuho if you beat Hakuho as sort of uh, something that can hurt you in this sort of thing. But they were both facing full Sanyaku slates, were Harumafuji and Kisuno Sato at the time. So I believe they both would have beaten any low Mega Shira that they were facing in that tournament. Now, Kisuno Sato beat Harumafuji and Kakuryu in this tournament, lost to Tochi Ozon. But I feel Kisuno Sato, having that one win buffer there, was, would be enough to lift him in to his second consecutive Shadow Yusho. And thus, our second Shadow Yokozuna promotion. Now, if Kisuno Sato had become a Yokozuna at this time, this unlocks a whole separate slew of alternate timeline possibilities. Most important being, if Kisuno Sato has already established Yokozuna when he gets hurt in 2017, does he rush his way back so soon? Did he rush himself back in 2017 because he wanted to prove himself worthy of the title of Yokozuna, which had eluded him for so long? Alas, we cannot know that, but I will say that Kisuno Sato appears a lot in the rest of the Shadow of Hakuho. And now, you show 27. Sassy 27. September 2013. Hakuho wins with a 14 and 1 record. Second place Jun Yusho is a tie between Ozeki Kisuno Sato and Seki Wake Goedo. One down at 10 and 5 are Yokozuna Harumafuji, Ozeki Kotoshogiku, and Megashira 13 Homasho. Six wrestlers were tied at 9 and 6. I give this one to Goedo in a definite maybe. Um, before we go any further with this one, quick sidebar. As I said many, many times before, one of my favorite things about this Shadow of Hakuho project is finding new and exciting Rikishi, well not new, old and exciting Rikishi, I had never had the chance to really explore. Today we say goodbye in the Shadow of Hakuho to Homasho. It's his last appearance in the leaderboards. Now, Homasho was fascinating because he was a very highly touted college rikishi and then dropped out after a while and then came back to professional sumo making his professional sumo debut at age 23. He ended up making his komasubi debut at age 30, which I believe was the oldest debut in the Sanyaku. So, as someone who's getting up there in years myself, Homasho, we salute you. Alright, back to the usual. Quick sidebar. Now, if we look at the three Yusho in this episode, you'll notice they are all chronological. They happen one, two, three in a row. And if we go back to the last of the Goedo in the last episode, we have four in a row. And Kisuno Sato has had a very good case to win all of them. Kisuno Sato won four Jun Yusho this year, which he ended up doing later again in 2016. I'll bring it up then, too. 
Some of you may be confused. How come I couldn't give this one to Kisa no Sato when I gave Goedo credit, even though he had like an extra win from Hakuho and Kisa no Sato didn't, so maybe he had an extra chance for another win with that? Ah, uh, how could you do that? Well, back in one of my previous professional incarnations, I was head waiter uh, for a group of sushi restaurants in Chicago. You were one of our guests. Thank you, and I hope you didn't mind my karaoke renditions of Mbop. And what you learn working for five years at a sushi restaurant uh, that has a liquor license is that there are very specific rules for Japanese drinking, especially Japanese men celebrating. Best way to put this is like, if the party's going on, you're gonna be partying. Uh, it's considered rude not to be on the party. And I have to imagine that if, in fact, Kisuno Sato had, at this point in the Shadow timeline, become the first Japanese Yokozuna in ten years, there would have been feasting, and I mean like feasting. So the idea that Kisa no Sato was going to be able to come back after that and like wrestle 15 days with a fully clear head with a non-aching body uh, and not sweating out pounds of sake every night, I just don't think he'd be able to do it. And like Goedo had a great tournament. He beat Hakuho, he beat Kisa no Sato, and he beat Kota Shogiku. So this is just a case of I think he was wrestling best at the time and I expect Kisa no Sato to be very tired. Definite maybe. Well, today we've already doubled the number of you show that Kisuno Sato won. And trust me, going forward, he's going to win a few more. He also would have beaten Kakuryu to the rank of Yokozuna, so they would have been like flip-flop 71 and 72, which would have been fun. I just want to say the most important thing about Kisa no Sato is he should be remembered for the amazing Ozeki he was and the Yokozuna he could and probably should have been were he not unfortunately injured. You represented your national sport with pride and dignity and gave an entire generation of young sumo wrestlers someone to look up to. So, domo arigato, Kisa no Sato. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Doyo. We've got some more exciting episodes in the hopper. Uh, we are going to be celebrating Hakuho yet again, but in a new chart-based way. You're going to love that. And we have a deep dive into former Yokozuna, Tama no Umi. Uh, you history buffs will enjoy that. So until then, everyone stay strong, stay safe, and we will see you next time on the Doyo. Rolling out.